spoiler warning, if you're new to the Wheel of Time series, do not watch this video. This is the first of two spoiler-heavy follow-up videos to my previous spoiler-free Heron Mart Sword video. If you have read the entire Wheel of Time series, this video is for you. But please go and watch the spoiler-free video first. After you watch this video, check out my second spoiler-heavy video all about Blade Masters in the series, and my top 10 ranked Blade Masters list. Seriously, this video even mentions details related to the final scene of the books, and you don't want to be spoiled. You've been warned. Okay, are they gone? Here we go. The first time we see a heron-marked sword in the books is on Winter Night in the Eye of the World. Tam brings it out from a chest that was under his bed, and Rand is surprised to see it. Rand asks Tam about where he got the sword and how much it cost. Tam says, I got it a long time ago, a long way from here, and I paid entirely too much. Two coppers is too much for one of these. Rand assumes that Tam actually purchased the sword from a merchant, but Tam was not referring to a monetary cost when he said he paid too much. Later, we find out over 40 years before Winter Night, Tam Althor ran away from his farm life in Emmons Field, and at the age of 17, he became a member of the Ilyaner army. After a few years of dedicated service and involvement in several wars, Tam eventually became a blade master and even rose to become the second captain of the Companions. It is said he likely would have become first captain if he'd been born in Ilion. In the Gathering Storm, Rand asks Tam, were you really a blade master? Tam nodded, I suppose. I killed a man who was one, did it in front of witnesses, but I've never forgiven myself for it, though it needed doing. Robert Jordan said that the Heron Mark Sword was given to Tam by the King of Ilion at the time. According to Theoryland, the general fan explanation is that Tam refused to take his sword, but was essentially forced to take it by the King of Ilion. We don't know who Tam killed to become a Blade Master, but it likely would have been revealed if Robert Jordan had lived to complete the prequel or Outrigger novels he had planned. From Winter Night, Rand takes Tam's strange sword and uses it throughout the first and second books. Many times Rand is kept safe because the Heron mark on the hilt is visible, even at a distance, and people are wary of him. At one point, Rand meets with the Queen of Andor, Queen Morghese, and Gareth Bryn says that Rand is too young to be a Blade Master, but the sword, quote, belongs with him. In The Great Hunt, Rand confronts Beazamon in a dream in a portal stone mirror world, and Beazamon causes Rand's sword to heat up in his hand, which brands a heron from the hilt into Rand's right palm. In the same book, in a chapter entitled Blade Master, Rand faces a true Shan Chan Blade Master, High Lord Turok, and kills him. Some fans argue that this was not because of Rand's skill as a true Blade Master, but because the pattern required it and his Taviran nature allowed him to win. According to Rand, because he defeated Turok without proper witnesses, he is not technically a Blade Master. At the end of the Great Hunt, when Rand stabs Beazamon in the sky above Falm, the heron mark on the hilt heats up and brands a second heron, this time into Rand's left palm, thus fulfilling the prophecy that he would be marked twice by herons. Tam's sword is destroyed during that confrontation. A quick thought about the Amazon Prime teaser sword. This is likely supposed to be Tam's sword, though it could be Lan's sword, and they're just adding the heron mark to simplify it for viewers. There is a leaked image from on set that shows this sword hanging nearby while Rand practices with a bow in what is likely the set for Faldara in Shinar. I won't reveal that image here, but you can go to wattseries.com to see it. The three biggest concerns that I've seen brought up about this sword are 1. The heron is not etched into the blade 2. Why is it a katana style? and 3. If this is Rand's sword, there's no heron mark on the hilt, so how will Rand's hands be branded? First. I think the heron on the blade was likely done this way to simplify things for the props department. It may not be etched into the blade, but it's still technically heron marked. This is not a deal breaker for me. Second, to me the katana style sword is also not a deal breaker, as the general concept of a curved sword is really all that Robert Jordan described. I've seen people mention the heron marked sword that was available for purchase that was supposedly approved by Robert Jordan himself. I have a 3D model of that sword in this video. The biggest difference between this and the katana style is the inclusion of slightly larger quillins on the guard and a different hilt. The books do refer to small braided quillins, but I still think these decisions to design it in this way are wise for the props department. 
and they fall in line with Rafe's recent Q&A he did on Twitter, where he mentioned that they want to make this series feel fresh and not copied from other fantasy series of the past. To me, this more Asian-influenced sword style is a perfect way to differentiate The Wheel of Time from series like Game of Thrones or The Lord of the Rings. I also believe we will see other variations of Heron Mark swords in the show. Third, regarding the lack of herons on the hilt, in my opinion, there are a few possibilities here that also aren't deal breakers. One, we don't know for sure that there is no heron on the hilt. It could be on the other side, or it could be dark and hard to see in this rendering, or it could be under the wrappings. A quick Google search revealed many katana-style swords, which contain symbols that are often covered by wrappings around the hilt. So it could still be there. Two, perhaps they chose to not have Rand branded by herons in the show. It might feel repetitive or unoriginal to have him branded by herons and then branded again by dragons later. It may simplify things for viewers if they use this trope only once. Third, it's possible they might choose to have Rand branded in a different way. Anyway, whatever the reason, I think it looks awesome and I can't wait to see this sword used in the show. Remember, this is another turning of the wheel. This is Rafe's vision, not Robert Jordan's. Okay, moving on. So, Tam's heron marked sword is destroyed after the Battle of Falma in the Great Hunt. Throughout the remaining books, Rand often summons a sword of fire made purely from weaves of the One Power. His fire sword has a small heron mark on the blade. According to the Wheel of Time wiki, there are about 20 blade masters mentioned in the books, including characters from the Age of Legends and the Third Age. There are also a small handful of characters who had heron marked blades but may not have been blade masters. One such character was King Laman de Modred, who ruled in Kyrian before Rand's birth. His heron marked blade was power wrought, but the hilt was made of ivory, the pommel was gold, and it was encrusted with gemstones. The weapon was not useful in real battle because of the gaudy hilt and scabbard. After Laman's death in the Aiel War, the Aiel kept his sword as a trophy. The sword passed through several owners over many years until Avienda acquired it and offered it to Rand as a gift in the fifth book the fires of heaven. Avienda hoped that this gift would free her of toe she incurred because Rand had innocently gifted her a bracelet. Rand keeps the blade and has it refitted to a proper hilt. He gives the gemstones, ivory hilt, and impractical scabbard back to Avienda, much to her displeasure. Rand does not use Layman's sword often as he finds the one power to be a better weapon for most things. However, he does keep Layman's sword right up until the end of the series and he even has it with him in the epilogue of the final book. I told you there would be spoilers. Ashraman, the male counterparts to the Aes Sedai, use the symbol of the curved heron-marked sword as a small silver pin on their collar. The mid-level rank, called Dedicated, wear the silver sword pin on their left side. Full Ashraman wear the silver sword and a gold and red dragon pin on their collars. One other sort of note is given to Rand by scholars in the Gathering Storm. The sword was found under a submerged ancient statue. To Rand's surprise, he recognized the sword, not from Luz Theron's memories, but from his own memories. This was the sword called Justice, wielded by Archer Pendrag Tanreal more than 1,000 years ago. Rand saw Archer Hawkwing using this sword when he was summoned by the Horn of Valir during the Battle of Falma against the Shan Chan. Rand admits that he doesn't know if it was power forged. However, Justice was likely power forged since it managed to last for over 1,000 years without going dull or rusting. The sword did not have any heron marks, but it was slightly curved and there was a dragon figure on the scabbard. Some fans have speculated that the sword may have originally belonged to Luz Theron Telamon and that Arthur Hawkwing gained possession of it 2,000 years later. In a fitting conclusion to Rand's heron marked history with his father, Rand gives justice to Tam Thor as a farewell gift before the last battle. Fun fact, during the last battle, when the dead heroes of the horn are summoned to fight, there were two copies of Justice fighting in the battle, one from Tamal Thor and the other from Arthur Hawkwing. That's pretty neat. Special thanks to Peter Nikolenko and Kevin Fontana for helping me with some of the 3D modeling for this video. You can follow them on Twitter, links in the description. Peter does some incredible blacksmithing work and has created some awesome Wheel of Time inspired armor. Go check it out. Please consider liking, subscribing, and supporting me on Patreon for more content like this. Comment below with which Wheel of Time weapon you would like to see next. Thank you to the artists who gave me permission to use their work in this video. And a big thank you to my wonderful patrons who help make these videos possible. May peace favor your sword.